Yeah, hello, Bernard. Hi, what, Carsten. What are we doing in this session? Yeah, this is sort of a little bit of a housekeeping session, trying to, you know, modifying some things. For example, um, we have only one desktop here published, right? And the name is not very, you know, you don't really know what you're getting if you're connecting to this one. So we might, you know, tweak the uh, tweak the name a little bit, maybe also with the workspace name to give it a more, you know, um, more details on this one. Also, um, please note here on the right hand side, this is the small update icon for the uh, remote desktop application. So if you're, uh, and that happens relatively frequently. So there is, or there are updates available from time to time. Um, there are also, I think, registry keys available for controlling the update mechanism for the remote desktop app, right? So, um, but make sure that, you know, that you're staying uh, with the latest and greatest ones uh, in order to have the latest features for this, All right? So um, did the update there. So let's just connect one more time. And so now next step is let's, you know, give this a more relevant name, right? So our desktop was hosted in the application group, or it was at least specified here, right? Um, and um, I'll dig into this and go for the applications, right? Which is a session desktop, right? There are two ways of application types, right? Right now, we only have a desktop, a full desktop, right? Um, but there is also uh, the possibility to do a remote remote app, and that's you know the next thing that we'll do. But first of all, we'll play a little bit with that with that desktop setting here. So I'll click on it and change the session desktop to. I think our operating system is a Windows 11, yes. multi-session, but that's maybe not so interesting. But an M365 or uh, well, we can do Office 365 components or whatever. Um, yeah, um, desktop. Um, or if you have a special graphics card, for example, that you could, you know, would you, that you would be benefiting from, um, then you could, you know, or if it's a, a a graphics workstation, a sort of desktop that you're publishing, then. Um, with a lot of graphics power, then you could, you know, put it in the names there, for example. Maybe later. Maybe later in a, <laughs> in a later video. The good thing about it is, so the desktop client here should have picked it up, or maybe if not automatically, just go here, um, do a refresh, and that should be relatively fast. So after the changes have been applied, you, you know, just need to do a refresh and then um, you should see it here, right? So that's one thing. Um, maybe, you know, we talked a little bit about the friendly name for the workspace. Um, so let's maybe go back there one more time and see where you can edit this. So on the properties, you should be able, you know, to, to tell it what it is. So um, let's just, you know, replace the one with workspace on HCI, something like that maybe. Right. Um, same procedure here. Once the workspace is updated, um, do a refresh on your client and it should be picking it up after some seconds here, right? Mm -hmm. Here it is. Next thing, uh, I would say, you know, let's fill a little bit more information here or let's presume that we want to have applications to be published directly, right? This is also something that you can do. Um, so I would create another application group, right? So not only a desktop application group, but a remote app application group. So let's do that. Hit the create button. And I'm taking the right subscription and the right resource group which one did we take it was rg avd something west yes west europe yeah and um you know we can only publish applications that are installed on the on the uh, on the session hosts and the configuration i mean for those is a host pool right so mm -hmm. uh we can only use you know they always have some uh, a relationship to the host pools and with that to the session host to the machines that they are running in right so we only have we can only have one 
desktop application group per host pool. That's why this guy here is grayed out, but we can have a remote app, um, remote apps thing. So I'm not quite sure how we should name it, but let's do maybe AVD. Uh, what did we say? Um, want to publish Notepad++ Notepad++ maybe, maybe yeah. Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Yeah, let's maybe do it like this, HCI, because it's based on HCI, host pool number one, and then it's remote apps. I'm not very... No, we are not uh, very good with names, right? Yeah, yeah, we had our... <laughs> quarrels regarding naming <laughs> conventions. Okay, but anyways, let's presume that this is a name we can both live with. Next thing would be to add the applications, right? Uh, you can do it now or later. Uh, however, you know, just be sure that you have some mechanisms there. Um, so start menu is probably mo most obvious. So if you install applications on these desktops, if they are up and running, right? Um, the, the agents that we that are running in these desktops, they sort of you know see all the applications that are installed and pre-fill that list for you, right? So you can even see Notepad++, for example, which we did install here, right? Uh, for example, so we could choose either this or let's take Excel, for example, right? No, no, um, let, let us take Notepad++. Now let's let's, let's let's take Excel first, okay? Uh, and um, because Always we might Excel. have your number guy. No, no, no. Yeah, there were issues with the double plus signs in the past, so um, okay. <laughs> maybe I'm not wanting to raise that error here, but uh, there might be some something. So let's start first with something else, and then we'll play a little bit more with it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's the first application, right? Um, yeah, um, and there's another thing, for example, which is an MSIX package. Um, this is another mechanism of uh, publishing applications to be, you know, running or executed on that session host. However, it's a different process, right? So the application is not installed. It's sort of sideloaded uh, with the user's logon session, like with the, a, a little bit comparable to the FS Logics profile shares where you have a virtual hard disk. However, it's not containing the profile data, it's containing the application, right? Mm -hmm. However, you need to build that virtual hard disk and the application and need to install it and register it. So it's it can be done, but it's a, a, a much longer process and we haven't done it so far, right? But look out uh, in the internet for AVD, MSIX, App Attach, there should be some videos about uh, doing so, right? Um, however, the option is is there. Okay, yeah, maybe we should be brave, okay, and do the uh, Notepad++ because you wanted to have it. So let's take, just take it and see if it works, All right? I have a question yeah. you maybe mm -hmm. can't answer, but I'm curious, mm -hmm. um, when you use Start Menu, obviously mm -hmm. it's looking into the Windows 11 multi-session host, what we have installed there, mm. because Notepad++ is there. Um, mm -hmm. How how is it because it's in these nodes are in the host pool and he's uh, scanning them or how does it know which applications are installed in our desktops? Yeah, yeah, somehow. It's, yeah, it's 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 scanning them. It's uh, using the agents that were, you were installing, right? So in a previous okay. video, we installed the agents and they are looking at what applications are installed. We would not be able to do this step if the application or the session hosts are offline right if okay. you would shut that shut them down i think it would tell them it would tell you hey uh i can't look into the host pool uh, i can't get this information another thing one. i'm thinking about uh, we should have the same applications deployed in all our um images right otherwise mm -hmm. uh, um Otherwise, we maybe choose an application that's only available in one of the, uh, oh, of the desktops, and then no. no? You should, you, yes, you are perfectly right. So the thinking is, whatever is in a host pool, right? The machines yeah. should be identical, right? Yeah. Or almost identical. I mean, not to the not to the ID, right? Because, yeah. but I mean, but all the applications. You, 
yes, you need to be consistent. Otherwise, you'll never know what you're getting, right? It would okay. be a lot, a, a lottery or you know something yeah. like that. And we did that. We we created our golden image with Notepad, mm. Not, Notepad plus plus and the Office tools, right. so they are available in both uh, desktops. Okay. And and also, you know, you're just talking about the inner, you know, the operating system size, but let's also see it from the outer thing, right? The 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 virtual machine setting. Do you think it would be a good idea to have, you know, uh, session hosts, a big one and a small one and a medium one in the same host pool? No, because... I have to think about it. Right? <laughs> no, I mean, of course not. <laughs> well, I mean, your users would get a different performance, right? Uh, yeah. Every time they connect to different hosts, right? And that's why we are saying, for example, in Azure, if you are using AVD, um, select a virtual machine type and don't mix the virtual machine type within a, uh, within a host pool, right? Uh, okay. Try to be consistent. I mean, you could maybe from a technical perspective, you could manage to do it, but you shouldn't be doing it. Okay. Assignments is, you know, is the thing um, we could do it later, but we can also, you know, uh, add the right users or give the users permissions to this desktop already. Uh, let's do it. And also workspace, right? So we do have a workspace sitting in the same uh, region, which is uh, West Europe. There we have it. It's only one we have, or therefore um, we are, it is being used. Advanced, no tagging. We are lazy. I'm lazy, sort of. And I create that thing. So, and if everything works, Let's keep fingers crossed, right? Um, even with the Notepad++ plus plus thing, it should be working relatively fast, right? Um, yeah, there are a lot of linked templates now. Okay, interesting. And uh, after this is done, yeah. Does it magic, but it has a conflict somehow in the Let's see. application template. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Same arrow. Remote app. So what's the template? It's Notepad. Like? It's Notepad plus plus, I guess. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Well, the plus plus is still a problem here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so not the best yeah. choice to choose this application. No, it's, uh, no, yeah, that's the, you know, uh, that's and the maybe worst. maybe add word or so. Add word. That's the, that's the worst choice that you could do. But some of the stuff worked, right? We may need to, you know, let's see and clean up the, the setting. Uh, so, uh, yeah, maybe some learning effect as well. So let's see if something has changed or if something has worked. Okay, let's go back and do a refresh here. See if we at least have Axel, sort of. I think so. Axel is there. Yes, you have. Right, but the Notepad++ plus plus stuff didn't work. So let's clean it up and maybe try, you know, a try Excel. Uh, Excel we have, but you know, let's try something else. So let's go under. Oh yeah, so it we need we don't even need to clean it up. It just didn't work. So let's take what do you want? Word. Uh, I'm a PowerPoint guy, right? So add PowerPoint. PowerPoint, right? Yes. Okay. And you can you you can add the Notepad without the plus plus. Yes, um, the simple one. Yeah, and there might be some other things, right? So in our start menu, we might, you know, it, it is or it should be possible. But anyways, I think, you know, the, the difficulty is it might, let's. Oh, no, I right. meant there is another notepad, right? Ah, okay. There's a Microsoft no, I, one. Yeah, I think it was somewhere in here, right? So uh, maybe the display name was the conflicting piece, um, but it was possible to do it somehow. Yeah, but uh, there's one other thing I want to show you, right? So I mean, uh, I can try to do a double click here and do the same thing, right? And start Excel. 
uh, it would look like you know if it's being run locally so let's see if i recall the name right password. um uh the password yes um and if everything works it should be starting up excellent it will be still you know in a remote session and you could see it here right so um it's still for uh it's still starting it and as you could see i mean it's it's uh, it's not activated yet um so i only have the trial phase for it but anyways i mean uh it it looks like it is being run locally but right? if you start another application it will share the same session i guess yeah um so it should be faster right not loading the prof profile again yeah so let's just quit that and um the other thing is a little bit where you need to pay attention is because i just you know hit the x symbol which is now in a disconnect state right so um if i would go to that desktop i would still see that there is a user connected to it Sometimes that's desired because next time you go back and you know do the double click again for that application, it will start up faster, right? Um, but sometimes you know uh, it might be you know you want to get access to your profile share on a different desktop and maybe it's blocked by Excel, you know, by the Excel session. So yeah. you may want to sort of um, you know control the log on or log off or disconnect behavior right uh, one other thing i wanted to show you because these applications here will show up under the search window right so um if you look for excel for example uh it should bring up uh, or it should at least find maybe where it is maybe under apps Okay, and then let's go back. Um, and that may take some time, right? Here it is, so until search picked it up. So it will be also showing, uh, although it's not executed locally, it's part of the uh, remote desktop uh, uh, connection, but you know, it's, um, you'll have something uh, in your search window to make it a little bit easier for the people to really find it and uh, mm -hmm. and get it right which i think is a good a good thing so now um coming back to what i was saying previously or earlier which is controlling a little bit the behavior of the host pools the disconnect state this is also something that you could do um on the host pool itself right so if you are a terminal server guy you know that there are some specific registry settings that you could choose for uh, controlling a little bit the behavior of the RDP session. Some of them have been ported into the AVD uh, control plane, which means for the desktops uh, or for the session hosts, um, you can modify a little bit, you know, the uh, uh, the session behavior, right? Um, if a client, for example, tries to reconnect in terms if anything goes wrong for example right if he's using compression for the uh for the traffic or you know are you looking more into multimedia um stuff or you know being traffic efficient right mm -hmm. or also you know from a security perspective sometimes you want to do uh, microphone and uh, video redirection into the um into the session in order to be able to do terminal server session, uh, not terminal server, uh, team sessions with audio and video, right, uh, within your desktop. Would be um, nice, right? Yeah. So that's you know th stuff that can be done and can be configured. Uh, I think it's not a hundred percent complete list. Um, there's still also, I think, the uh, possibility to do some advanced uh, settings here, right? So we can do the RDP properties, uh, which you are familiar with. Some of them also work for these, uh, for AVD desktops. But there is a little bit more to it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, do you have anything else you want to discuss in this one? Or No, I think it's a, it's a basic overview of over a lot of things and to get a good AVD installation, you have to learn much, much more and then we can cover in this uh, video. And to be honest, I'm not an AVD expert, 
I, I was a MetaFrame terminal server expert years ago, more than, mm. more than 15 years ago, but uh, a lot of it is still uh, familiar, familiar uh, to me. Mm. So it's, it's coming back. So it's a lot, uh, there is more to do. We have some easy applications here like Word, mm. Excel and so on. They are perfect for these environments, but there are other applications that's maybe are not so easy to install, maybe 3D applications or so, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. we know. Maybe let's look at those stuff in another session. So we will do another video and uh, it will be about FS Logic. Uh, yeah, we will have an, <laughs> uh, an administrator look at FS Logics. Okay, see you there.